Hey there. In this video, we're taking a look at the dynamic range of the FX30 and comparing that with the dynamic range of the FX3. <laughs> That's what I'm shooting on right now. So for what I've seen so far online in terms of testing, we should expect to see less dynamic range on the FX30, but I wanna take a look and see what that really looks like. In general, there are a couple of different ways to test dynamic range. And I think a lot of you watching this are familiar with some of the methods that Gerald Undone and CineD use to mathematically calculate dynamic range using specialized hardware and software. And that's just part of the puzzle. And the other part of it is looking at something which I like to do is a latitude test or a push-pull test where I over and underexpose the image and sort of see what happens in terms of noise and color in the highlights and the shadows. And the reason why I like to do this is that it's always important to look at the image. And I talk about this a lot on this channel. It's, it's Good to know the specifications and all of the numbers that are associated with the capabilities of a camera, but it's always important to look at the actual image because that's what you actually see and that's what your clients and everyone else out in the world sees is the actual image. So as you look through these examples and we take a look at the latitude tests here, look for noise and color. So I definitely noticed that the image on the FX30 is noisier than the FX3 across the board. And if you take a look at this example here, this is at the base ISO of 800. You may not be able to see it in the full size image, but when you zoom in, there's definitely a little bit of a difference. I'm not sure if it's coming through properly on YouTube, but trust me, I will go into this in more depth in a future video. In terms of all the testing parameters and how I set all this stuff up, I shot both cameras in CineEye at their lower base, so base of ISO 800, which is an S-Log3, at 24 frames a second, shutter one over 50, and I used a custom white balance. And when I set the exposure on these cameras, I used a 41% zebra and a gray card with the LUT turned off. First, let's take a look at the overexposure test. And I got my proper exposure at F10, and then I didn't change anything else, but I just opened up the aperture to overexpose the image, and then I correct the image in post. Now, when I do that, I don't adjust any colors, I just adjust the exposure to get it to match the original image at F10. So take a look. These cameras performed very similarly in the overexposure test. I would say both were good up to four stops and broke at five stops with the image looking pretty similar. So in the highlights, they performed very similarly. Now onto the underexposure test. And for this, it's just the other way around. So I get proper exposure at f1.8 and then I close down the lens to underexpose the image and then I correct it in post, not adjusting any colors, just exposure. So take a look. The underexposure test is where I started to see the difference between these two cameras. They were both very similar to around three stops underexposed, but after that, the FX30 started having some color changes and losing color information. You can see that in the image here, starting around negative three and one third stops, and it progressively gets worse the more you underexpose the image. And then the FX3, this starts to happen to around negative four and two third stops where you start to lose color information and the image kind of falls apart. So overall, I would say, you know, in the shadows here and the underexposure tests, the FX3 is probably around one and a third stops better than the FX30. And this is why it's always good to actually look at the images and see what's going on because the dynamic range is not just a number, but it's interesting to see that there is information there, but the colors are starting to fall apart a little bit faster on the FX30. 
Also, I'm not sure if you caught this, but the FX30 autofocus did better than the FX3 when underexposed. The FX3's autofocus started to struggle a little bit earlier on in these tests than the FX30, so just something interesting to note. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples to see if this backs up what we got in the latitude test. The first example is me standing in a dark room next to a bright window. So the way I exposed this was I made sure I didn't clip the highlights and then I tried to save as much information in the shadows as possible. And so when you take a look at this image, take a look at me where I'm standing in the shadows and you'll probably see here that the color information is a lot stronger in the FX3 versus the FX30. You can definitely get a lot more information in the colors and just the image in general in the shadows on the FX3. Now, taking a look at this example where I was outside, standing in a darker area where the sun was coming from behind me, kind of a backlit shade situation. And if you take a look at my face here, you can see again that there's a lot more color information on the FX3 than the FX30. Now overall, I was quite surprised and impressed by the FX30's performance in terms of dynamic range compared against the FX3. And when you hear about you know, a camera having one or one and a half less stops of dynamic range, that's kind of a big difference. But when I actually started looking at the images and the, the difference there was kind of you know, subtle in that you, know, you were losing some color information in the shadows, I think the FX3 performed really, really well and I think can be used in a lot of high dynamic range situations when you're shooting in S-Log3. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit subscribe down below. It'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.